A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We've of course seen plenty of scenes like this. Unfortunately this was breaking during the course of yesterday and uh, we may well see scenes um, very similar to this actually through the course of today due to the frontal system moving back north once again. Very complex situation that has been explained very widely here on the channel in recent days. Um, and in today's video, I really want to look at the remainder of uh, the month and also into November. But uh, briefly touching on the situation over the last few days, of course, we've seen um, one of two areas of low pressure moving north, bumping up against an area of high pressure over Scandinavia. That's stalled out the front, warmer and moister, getting drawn uh, northwards. Um, then and getting slammed up against that wall of high pressure winds coming in from a, a colder drier um, east to north easterly direction and of course as that warm moisture bumps up against that wall it then creates a stall frontal system heavy persistent rain has been the case um, for a good 24 hours or so then that system then moved southwards bringing heavy flood and rainfall to parts of england and wales but then a, that secondary area of low pressure, away down over the Bay of Biscay, um, moving northwards here, increasing the gales across eastern areas of the British Isles, but also bringing um, further heavy rainfall to parts of England and Wales, southern Scotland. And through the course of last night and into the first half of today, that frontal system then moved back northwards, bringing an, a, um, a secondary red warning to the very areas that seen the red warning a mere 24 hours before that so a further 100 150 millimeters of rain falling on top of 150 to close to 200 millimeters of rain so an ex an astonishing uh, you know rainfall event um through the course of the last few days and this comes just a mere 10 12 days um you know after uh, Scotland's uh, you know, wettest two-day period in recorded history back, I believe it was the weekend of the 6th and the 7th of October, we've seen um, an astonishing rainfall event as well. This October, I believe, will be the wettest on record for Scotland, and it could be in the top 5, 10 wettest Octobers on record for the UK as a whole. Of course, we got off to a fairly dry start back at the um, first week or so of October. We're catching up now across more southern portions of the UK but really across uh, the bulk of Scotland even northern England uh, we have seen some astonishing amounts of rainfall do we have end in sight to this type of pattern unfortunately certainly based on this GFS ensemble for the uh, both the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation it screams a big fat no uh, when you've got this kind of straight line um a, a, you know neutral arctic oscillation that tends to have a fairly um, balanced um, upper air pattern between the the mid and um, high latitude region here but the north atlantic oscillation fairly flat lines well close to neutral indicates a pretty zonal atlantic driven type set situation then of course as we look at the gfs ensemble you can see here this is a uh, the 500 millibar geo potential heights for the next several days here as you can see High pressure across the north, we've got higher pressure across southeastern Europe, a complex um you know um you know area of low pressure extending from all the way down towards the Azores, um, you know, across the Balearics and all the way up into the British Isles. We've got multiple areas of low pressure that has been trying to push northwards, drawing that warm, humid air with it. And then, of course, you know, bumping up against that wall of higher pressure that has essentially just kind of stopped uh, these weather systems from progressing. And, of course, when you've got stall weather systems, you know, whether it be in the deep tropics with a hurricane, uh, you know, if that system becomes stalled out, then we we'll see record-breaking amounts of rainfall and the uh, incredible flooding in response to that. And you see that here in the middle latitudes. We've, of course, seen it multiple times over the last couple of months. Storm Daniel, of course, dropping record rainfall in parts of uh, Greece due to its stall nature. And then, of course, it drifted in to uh, Libya. 
we've also seen back in June a system bringing record rate and rainfall to uh, the island of Madeira. And I also do believe, by the way, that the tropics has played a significant role this uh, you know, past few months in this type of pattern. A lot of uh, systems kind of lifting out of the tropics northwards over the Atlantic that I believe it played a role in delivering, you know, the heat wave conditions during the first half of September, but also more westward tracking systems here uh, over the far west Atlantic, glancing blows at the Canadian Maritimes. I believe that built high pressure over the North Atlantic to its east, but then in turn downstream increased the trough over the UK and Ireland here. So I think the tropics have played a major role in the type of situation that we've seen in recent times. But as we play through this loop, you can see here that the negative heights remain in control through the remainder of October and then on into even early November here. Yes, they may weaken. Yes, they may pull a little bit further west. But generally speaking, you can see here that we do not have any real indications of high pressure in the, the next day, couple of weeks here, unfortunately. So, uh, no major reprieve from the unsettled pattern that we've seen uh, in, in recent times. If we look at the uh, precipitation anomaly here, this is the seven-day increments. Upcoming seven days here, you can see that it is wetter than average across uh, eastern portions of Scotland, drier than average slightly across more western areas thanks to the orientation of the flow, wetter than average across uh, you know parts of uh, western Spain, uh, up through France and the Low Countries, play through this loop, and you can see here that the the wet theme continues on into the month of November here. Then, of course, as we look at the bigger, broader picture here, let's have a look and see what the CFS V two monthlies are indicating for the uh, upcoming period here. So this is November, and slightly wet than average. Notice here is kind of drier than average across parts of uh, much of Northern Ireland, the northwestern portion of the Republic of Ireland. Uh, and across northern Scandinavia, we've got wet than average conditions across central areas. Then as we skip to the month of December, looking rather wet. Uh, January, looking very wet. And even February, looking wet. What does that indicate? That, to me, indicates the CFSV2 having a fairly Atlantic-driven winter overall. So we'll wait and see what happens. Of course, I did uh, share in the video yesterday, looking at the polar vortex, looking at the the current state of the El Nino, will it be an east-based or will it be a central Pacific-based El Nino? That will be critical to the type of pattern that we see, not only here across the UK and Ireland and, and Western Europe, but also across the, much of the Northern Hemisphere. If you get that east-based um, El Nino and you have the atmospheric response to that, you tend to find that we have a stronger jet stream, stronger polar vortex, and overall a warmer wetter winter and certainly the latest run of the CFSV2 is indicating that we have a fairly wet looking upcoming winter season here. So be sure to check out the video from yesterday looking at that and also of course the recent coverage of Storm Babette. We'll have some interesting statistics when it comes to the overall theme Um, you know what has taken place with the Babette and also the, the heavy rainfall that we're seeing today uh, with, uh, of course, forcing that uh, red warning to be issued by the Met Office. We'll have a look back and see some of the interesting st statistics likely to come out from all this when all the numbers come in. So uh, plenty more material for you to um, you know, consider and, and look at as we go forward here. Let's have a look at the CFSV2 uh, rainfall here, upcoming seven days. Then uh, the following seven days, week three looks as if it tries to dry out. But this is, of course, the period between the 3rd and the 10th of November here, uh, which is quite interesting here. Finally, looking at the two meter temperature anomalies, we'll look at the uh, slightly outdated version, unfortunately. Um, and I can show you uh, what that's indicating here with regards to is it going to upload? It doesn't look as if it's going to allow me to, unfortunately. So, yeah. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and coming up in tomorrow's video, Global Weather and Climate Report, looking at the um, week just going by with regards to the world's weather and even some climate chat as well. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.